The first step to solve a trigonometric equation with complex numbers is to remember how the trigonometric functions are defined. First off, we have that sine is equal to e to the ic minus e to the minus ic divided by 2i. And we have that cosine is equal to e to the ic plus e to the minus ic divided by 2. And tangents is simply sine divided by cosine, so that one becomes following. And please note that these are just the most common trigonometric functions. But I got a document in the description describing some more trigonometric functions. So check that out if I now miss your favorite one. But let's continue with the example. So let's say we want to solve the trigonometric equation, which is that cosine is equal to minus i. First off, we can use the definition of cosine to rewrite the whole equation as following. And this is actually a quadratic equation, but kind of in disguise for a moment. And we can see it more clearly if we rewrite the expression of it. So let's start off by multiplying both sides by 2, and then add 2i to both sides. And lastly, multiply both sides by e to the ic. And the second term in this new expression can be simplified by the fact that it is equal to e raised to minus ic plus ic, which is equal to 1. So the whole equation simply becomes the following. And now it might be a little bit more obvious that this indeed is a quadratic equation with respect to e to the ic. And the next step is to simply solve it using whatever method you like. So by example using the completing the square method we get the following. And from this we know that e to the ic plus i all of this raised to the power 2 is equal to minus 2. So by taking the square root of both sides we end up with e to the ic is equal to minus i plus minus the square root of 2i. And now we have two cases, right? e to the ic is equal to minus i minus the square root of 2i or e to the ic is equal to minus i plus the square root of 2i. And the thing we want to do now is to solve for c for these two cases. And to do that we are going to use the complex logarithm function which is simply that the complex logarithm of a complex number is equal to the natural logarithm of the length of a complex number plus i times the argument of a complex number. And remember now that the argument for a complex number is not just one value. We have infinite many arguments for the same complex number. And that is why we are going to use the principal argument and the fact that the argument of a complex number is equal to the principal argument of the same complex number plus 2 pi times n, where n is the integer. So let's start by using a complex logarithm on the first case. Here we get that ic is equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of minus i minus the square root of i plus i times the argument. And now we have to determine the principal argument for this complex number. And in this image here we can see that we have two angles that describes the complex number, right? We have minus pi divided by 2 and we have 3 pi divided by 2. Both of these angles are corresponding to the same complex number, right? But only one of them corresponds to the principal argument. And as you might remember, the principal argument must lie between minus pi and pi. And therefore the principal argument for this complex number is minus pi divided by 2. And now we can write the whole expression as following. And the next step is to determine the length of a complex number. And in this image here we can see that the length is simply 1 plus the square root of 2. And the last step is to simply divide both sides by i which gives us that c is equal to ln of 1 plus the square root of 2 divided by i plus i times 
minus pi divided by 2 plus 2 pi times n, and all of this divided by i. And this can be simplified a bit by using the fact that if the second term has i in the denominator and numerator, and the fact that a i in the denominator is the same thing as a minus i in the numerator. And this gives us the following solution to the quadratic equation for the first case. And now we just have to do it one more time, but this time for the second case. And then we are done. But the principles are exactly the same. So we start by taking the complex logarithm of both sides. And the principal argument for this complex number is going to be pi divided by 2, as you can see in the image. And the length is going to be minus 1 plus the square root of 2. And this gives us the following expression for i times c. And by once more dividing both sides by i and simplifying it exactly as we did before, we get that c is equal to minus i times ln of minus 1 plus the square root of 2 plus pi divided by 2 plus 2 pi times n. Let's try doing another example, but this time try to do it yourself first, since the method is pretty much exactly the same as last time. It would actually be pretty fun to know how many of you guys that actually try to do these examples. I mean, most of you are probably just sitting there and waiting for me to continue and tell you how to solve the problem, right? So either way, let's continue. We start as before and use the definitions to rewrite the equation. And the next step is to try to simplify this quadratic equation. And we do that by multiplying both sides with 2i. And the left side of this new expression is 2e to the ic minus 4e to the minus ic. And we can simplify this even more by dividing both sides by 2. And by multiplying both sides with e to the ic, we get that e to the ic raised to the power 2 minus 2 is equal to i times e to the ic raised to the power 2. And if I now factor out e to the ic raised to the power 2, we get the following. And from this we can say that e to the ic raised to the power of 2 must be equal to 2 divided by 1 minus i. And by multiplying the denominator and the numerator with the denominator's conjugate, we get that this is equal to 1 plus i, which means that e to the ic raised to the power of 2 is equal to 1 plus i. And a quick side note is that here we can also use the exponential rules to rewrite the left side of this expression as e to the 2ic, right? And the last bit of the equation can be solved by using either of these two expressions. But one of them makes you work a lot more harder for a solution. So let's start with a more complicated one. We have to start by taking the square root of a complex number. So how do we even do that? The trick is to use the polar form for this complex number. And if you remember, the polar form is simply the length, that's the square root of 2, times e to the i times the argument for this complex number. And the argument in this case is pi divided by 4. And now we can see that taking the square root of a complex number is the same thing as taking the square of a length and dividing the argument by 2. And now we once again have two cases. So since the complex number is written on a polar form, the logarithm of the first case is pretty easy to determine. 
since we can determine directly from the polar form that the length of a complex number is 2 raised to the power of 1 divided by 4. And the argument for this complex number is pi divided by 8, which is the argument that lies between minus pi to pi. So that argument is indeed the principal argument for the complex number. And from this we can just divide by i and simplify a bit to get the solution. And if we now consider the second case, when we have that e to the ic is equal to minus and the same as above. The length is still the same, but the minus sign in front has done something with the argument for this complex number. The minus sign actually rotates the whole complex number 180 degrees, or 1 pi. And there are two possible angles for this complex number. You get the first one by going in the clockwise direction. So that is pi divided by 8 plus pi. And that becomes 9 pi divided by 8. And we get the other one by going in the other direction, so anti-clockwise. And that is pi divided by 8 minus pi, which simply becomes minus 7 pi divided by 8. And only one of them can be the principal argument. And as you remember, the principal argument must lie between minus pi and pi. And it's only the one here that does that. And from this we get that c is equal to minus i times the natural logarithm of 2 divided by 4, minus 7 pi divided by 8, plus 2 pi times n. And that was for the first case, so let's do the easy one now. Now I have that e raised to the power 2ic is equal to 1 plus i, which we can rewrite in polar form as following. And from this we can simply take the logarithm of both sides, which gives us that 2ic is equal to ln of 2 raised to the power 1 divided by 2, plus i times pi divided by 4, which is the principal argument, plus 2 pi times n. And from this we can simply divide both sides by 2, which gives us that c is equal to minus i times ln of 2 divided by 4, plus pi divided by 8, plus pi times n. And this is exactly the same solution as the one we got up here. It gives us exactly the same amount of information. It is written on one line, that is all, and took shorter time to determine. But let's recap a bit. What do you need to do when solving a trigonometric equation? First off, you have to use the formulas. You have to use the definitions for trigonometric functions to rewrite the equation. And the next step is to multiply both sides with e to the ic, and then solve for e to the ic. And the last step is to use the complex logarithm to solve for c. And to use it you need to know the length for a complex number and the principal argument. Thanks for watching.